There's lots of interest in using gypsum to improve your gardens and your soils. And uh, we're going to talk specifically about if that interest is warranted and when you should use it, when you shouldn't use it. Chip and I are all about the soil and gardening, the relationship between the two. We think the most important part of gardening and landscaping is soil. If this soil-based gardening idea interests you, subscribe to our channel. I'm John Valentino, president of John and Bob's Corporation. I'm here with Chip Valentino, and right behind both of us is Lagerstromia indica natchez, so a white Indian tribe crepe myrtle. The three of us are interested in gypsum today. Lots of information about gypsum is around, lots of interest. People think it's a, a cure-all for your soil, and that's not the case at all. I think gypsum fits into this category of uh, myths that, I, that interest me very much. If you watch this series of videos, you'll see me kind of uncover one myth after another, things that everyone accepts as the gospel in gardening or landscaping, and I'll tell you it's not really true. And there's a lot of that with gypsum. And we'll get right into that as we explore exactly what is gypsum. Gypsum is calcium sulfate, which is a mineral. All of the benefits surrounding it are mostly a myth, um, although there are some situations where it can do uh, miraculous things for your soil. It comes for landscape and garden and soil purposes, it comes in two forms. In a powder, and you just uh, spread it all around. Most soil scientists recommend doing a little bit of incorporation, although some say it's not necessary, but the powder is one option which kind of gets on everything and looks white everywhere. You can also use gypsum to, to mark things with. Uh, it, apart from it benefiting soil. And then uh, it also comes in a granular form, which is popular, kind of like, looks like a fertilizer. So you spread it like you would spread a fertilizer with a whirlybird spreader, or you can throw it on by hand. One of the most popular ones of that kind of demonstrates the myth-like qualities of gypsum. It's called Soil Buster. And Soil Buster, in my opinion, is just a fabulous name, meaning you have problems with hard, heavy, soil that is hard to work in and you want to bust it up, you use Soil Buster. And really, the name's great, but it really isn't accurate in that there's very specific times when you should use gypsum. Other than that, it doesn't provide you much benefit. In fact, can cause some problematic issues. So those situations where it's fantastic, and, and you would probably only know this if you had a soil test done, is if you have high sodium and low calcium. And what gypsum does is it removes a sodium from the soil and it replaces it with calcium. And calcium is extremely important in soil, and it is occasionally, probably more than occasionally, low in soils. And, and the high sodium is probably a, a little more uncommon, but in western soils, particularly around where we're located here in the Central Valley of California, occurs quite frequently. So if you have high sodium and low calcium, gypsum is great because it does exactly what you need done in that situation. But I wouldn't use it if your soil has any other problems or, or uh, challenges. High sodium and low calcium is exactly what we discovered at our project of this regional hospital in Fresno. And we used gypsum at a high rate, scattered it all over, and then we put um, mulch over the top and then uh, irrigated it in. And then we combined that uh, with other efforts. Just as a matter of course, there's certain things we would use in soils, which we'll get into in the next points. But in getting a soil test, you'll learn about what else is a problem besides low calcium and high salt. And so gypsum is kind of universally accepted as what you use if, if you go out and you can't dig in your soil, it's hard. But it's not that simple, and it could cause other problems if you use it where it's not warranted. So keep in mind, it's warranted if you have high sodium and low calcium.
So an obvious question is if we're not going to use gypsum and we have heavy soil and hard soil that we can't dig in, what do we use? We infuse that soil with life and that's why frequently compost is uh, recommended as a way to fundamentally change everything about soil including the hardness, the diggability, the porosity. That's really the essence of what John and Bob's products are like is we take concentrated ingredients from good quality compost and we package them and sell them as ways of changing everything about your soil including the porosity and the tilth and the uh, diggability of it. So if you have hard soil, you want to infuse that soil with life, beneficial bacteria, good nematodes, fungi, protozoa. And there's lots of ways to do that, not only with those microbes themselves, but also with attractants for those microbes. And there's lots of products that are attractants for those microbes. What we would recommend instead of uh, gypsum is let's look into ways that we can infuse this soil with life. And if we can infuse it with life, we can change everything about it. And a good part of infusing it with life after we make those applications is some type of good top dressing mulch. That's a good way to protect it and allow these ingredients that we're using to begin to work. And that's also a big part of changing everything about soil. So instead of gypsum, think soil life. The problem with using it just on a wholesale basis, every time you've got something wrong with your soil, it, the answer is soil buster. The problem with that is it can result in shortages of important uh, minerals in soil, micronutrients or micro elements, micro minerals, uh, however you want to put it, that, that are key. And it's easy to end up with these shortages without really knowing it, and gypsum can be the problem. So I think rather than just using it wholesale, we need to be careful with the use of gypsum, be aware of exactly what it's for, and that it isn't an all-cure. There is an all-cure product in the landscape industry, and that is compost. You can't think of a situation where a good, high-quality compost isn't appropriate. Gypsum isn't, isn't an all-cure, but good quality compost is. If you have any questions about gypsum or the results of using it when it shouldn't have been used, let us know in the comments. So we talked a lot about when uh, gypsum isn't appropriate. If you want to know what will address those problems, we talked about high quality compost and that's exactly what our products are about. They're a concentrated compost. Go to our website and look at all the products and consider uh, purchasing them at johnandbobs.com. So last week's plant is a pretty distinctive one that probably everyone knows agave. One of the problems with using agave is many of the varieties tend to get too big. This one stays small and so we use it a lot. It's called Blue Glow. Each of the people who identified it properly won a six pound bag of blend, which is what we will give out this week again for this week's plant naming contest. Click the link in the comments in order to submit your answer. Speaking of your garden soil and what's good for it and bad for it, we did a prior video that you might want to watch. Is chemical fertilizer bad for your soil? A lot of interesting information covered there and I think uh, you'll find it informative and it's the key to your gardening success.